welcome to another episode of Tanhana on Random Electronic Things. Last week we discussed repairing the power supply of the HP modulation domain analyzer. And today we are going to look at what the modulation domain actually is. Just to clarify, this video is going to be a little bit longer than my normal clips. So today we are going to start out by looking at the theory behind the modulation domain. And then we are going to do some practical ex ex experiments. One of them will include some uh, qualification of the behavior of an Arduino 101 process computer. And I've put in the show description below the links to the various parts so that you can skip things which don't interest you. Let us start out by looking at an instrument you all know and love, namely the oscilloscope. An oscilloscope shows us the voltage over the time. So essentially, as the time passes by, we see the change in the voltage, leading to the well-known sines, triangles, all that kind of stuff. If we perform an FFT on this data, or if we use the spectrum analyzer, we end up in the spectral domain, which gives us the voltage over the frequency which is in this area over there. And today we are concerned with the modulation domain, which makes up the third part of this coordinate system. The modulation domain essentially shows the frequency of the signal as the time passes by. We see this here and here. And a good way to think of the modulation domain and the analysis function is to pre pre imagine that it is an oscilloscope which simply doesn't show the voltage but instead shows the frequency of the signal currently being analyzed. First generation Arduinos like the UNO we are basically based on a simple set of routines embedded into the ROM of the microphone. More advanced systems, such as the Arduino 101 I'm handling here, use a real-time operating system. And this is at least what I was told at the Arduino Developer Summit. As the time goes by, more and more of these Arduinos will switch to real-time operating systems. And this definitely makes sense from an educational point of view, as it allows access to advanced features with relatively little coding effort. But sadly, every real-time operating system comes with a bit of a penalty compared to native hardware programming. And one area where one really, really sees this is the maximum possible frequency output. I mean, yes, I know it's a contrived example, but it's nevertheless quite interesting. And of course, because this is about the modulation domain, Let's take a look at it with our MDO. As the first little test, we are going to feed an Arduino 101 with the sketch you are currently seeing on the screen. It emits a rectangular waveform, which we can then see on the LeCroix oscilloscope, which is connected to the process computer. Its display output looks like this. As we can see here at the first glance, the rectangular waveform looks quite stable. It just jitters a tiddle little bit. And so now we are going to turn on persistence and we see we get a little bit of extra data. And if we now increase the time base, we might get a little bit more information. But even if this would be a digital phosphor oscilloscope, the information would be but a set of color gradients and we don't get real information about the jitter behavior. This is where a modulation domain analyzer shines. So let's switch our probe. This broadcast needs to be interrupted for a short TSA, a TAM service announcement. I put loads and loads of time into these videos, at least one hour cutting, filming, setting up the experiments, everything. And I love doing it. I do it all for you. I've got one request. It takes you five seconds to subscribe to my channel 
and another five seconds to like my video. And it takes 30 seconds to share the video with one of your friends or write a nice comment. So please guys, motivate me and help me and be nice. Subscribe, like and share. So, as we see, the modulation domain analyzer has just automatically set itself up and has started to collect some samples. And we see here that about the majority of the waveforms generated is here in the area of about 123 kilohertz. But that there also is a quite significant amount of slower waveforms, some of which even range down into the 119 kilohertz range. And we see here, as time goes by, the diagram becomes more and more accurate. This kind of information is really important because it allows you to qualify whether the process computer is in principle suitable to your application or whether you are better served somewhere else. Qualifying the behavior of Arduinos might be a very interesting thing, but it's not the only thing you can do with a modulation domain analyzer. You can also use the system to find out more about function generators and malfunctions. In the following steps, I'm showing you a prezitronic generator, which has basically just a small issue, namely that the caps are old and need to be exchanged. And this leads to slightly odd voltages during starter, but the frequency is not significantly affected. And this can be verified really, really easily with the modulation domain analyzer. The Lacroix is now all set up, and now I just have to unground the input in order to start the acquisition. And we are seeing the waveforms are being acquired. Sometimes the generator hops around a little bit, but we are starting to see that as the warm-up has completed, the waveform is usually more or less stable and is just jumping around a little bit. And now we are asking ourselves, what is wrong here? Obviously, the voltage isn't quite correct, but now the question is, what about the frequency? And now I've connected a Prezitronic to our modulation domain analyzer, which we mentioned in the last part of the video. And now it's time to get to work. To make things really simple, I have set up the time base and the vertical span before, and now we're simply clicking the run button. And as we see, the modulation domain analyzer gets to work. Here at the bottom, we are seeing that the samples are being collected. And here we see a histogram showing the frequency distribution over time. And as we see, our generator actually is pretty darn stable because you see that these two values are not very much apart. So be careful, these modulation domain histograms, they can look quite evil if you uh, are not carefully looking at the border values. I'll demonstrate this. Now I've changed into center and span mode. And now I'm, I'm increasing the span. And now I'm decreasing the span. And as you see, with a span of 50 hertz, you have the normal needle-like result you would expect. While if you dig in, the histogram becomes wider and wider. With this, we've come to the end of our little video on modulation domain analysis. What I've been showing you here, of course, is but a small array of the abilities that can be achieved by looking at problems in the modulation domain. Many problems which are complex, when you look at them in the spectral or in the oscilloscope domain, become really, really easy once you look at them from the perspective of a modulation domain analyzer. One other very, very interesting approach is, for example, the analysis of motor behavior. If you put an encoder on the motor shaft and you simply generate a click every time the motor turns over, you can analyze the RPM counts 
very effectively with your modulation domain analyzer. This, of course, is but one of many interesting things. I hope that you've enjoyed the video and please leave me some comments telling me more about what you do with your MDO.